So this is a, a normal study. Um, so this is a parasternal long axis view. And let me let me pause it. So it's a parasternal long axis view. And um, you have the right ventricular outflow track up here. This is the septum, okay? And you have the posterior wall. Now, attached to the posterior wall, you have the uh, posterior mitral leaflet, and then the anterior mitral leaflet, right? Everybody see that? Okay, the cord extends all the way down, down, you'll have the papillary muscles. You have two papillary muscles. You have your anterior lateral and your posterior medial. Um, in the parasternal long axis view, you can see the aorta. This is the, the aortic valve is closed here, and you can see it closed with it's supposed to be a, a very thin line. Okay, so the aortic valve is closed and the mitral valve is open. Okay, so this would be um, our diastolic frame, which um, if you remember, diastole is from the end of the T wave to the beginning of the QRS. So, so power external long axis or right ventricular outflow track is here. Septum, posterior wall. This is your posterior mitral leaflet. The anterior mitral leaflet is there. This is your left atrium and your aortic valve closed, and this is the aorta, which goes up. This is your descending aorta right there, okay? Um, and you, when you do your power sternal long axis view, you need to do measurements. So if you look carefully, um, you're going to have measurements of the septum, then you're going to measure the LV cavity dimension in diastole, and then the posterior wall. So let's just play it and see. So measure the, measure, somebody need to mute their mic. Um, so you measure the septum, the LV cavity size in diastole, and the posterior wall. All right, so you do those measurements. So we put it in motion, and then you do your systolic measurements. Okay. So in systole, the aortic valve is open. You can see that. The aortic valve is open. And you measure your left atrial dimension in systole. You measure your left ventricular internal dimension in systole. Okay? So your anterior mitral leaflet right there, and this is the posterior leaflet. Okay. Um, we haven't done any we have not done it, but basically M mode across the mitral valve. And don't don't bug yourself down with this so one. We go over M mode okay. in a separate lecture. But this is basically M mode. We do it across the LV cavity. We do it across the the mitral valve and then we do it across the someone someone didn't mute their mic. It's creating disturbance. Um, and then you do it across the aortic valve. So this is M mode. Um, so we're not going to mention anything about M mode, but you, in your parasternal long axis view, that's where you're going to do, um, do your measurements. You're going to measure in diastole, measure in systole. This is your RV, right ventricular inflow view, right? And remember, this is the, the, the right ventricle, right? This is your right atrium, and these are your tricuspid valve. This is the only view you can see the posterior leaflet. This is the posterior uh, tricuspid leaflet, and then this is the anterior. So let's put it in motion. Okay? so. This is the RV inflow view, and you can see that there is some color going backwards from the RV to the RA, which is tricuspid regurgitation. And let's pause this and say, okay. So 
this is your uh, your cursor. Your cursor is across the tricuspid valve, okay? And you have you have um, this is actually an artifact. So let me just play this. So you All right, so she went back into the okay, All right. So she's moving back and forth. So the, the the beauty about the parasternal long axis view, you can shift from your RV inflow view, you can you can go on to your short axis. So you know from that parasternal long axis view, you can get multiple uh images all right so she's actually looking at the this is across the pulmonic valve okay so it's a short axis at the level of the the aorta and you concentrate on the pulmonic valve remember the pulmonic valve is right there goes into the pulmonary trunk and the pulmonary trunk splits okay you get uh, the right pulmonary artery and then the left pulmonary artery. This is the Doppler. Okay, you, so the, the curse is across the uh, pulmonic valve, and you get this Doppler signal below the baseline. And if you gate it with the ECG, it occurs in systole. Okay, so this is a normal ejection across the pulmonic valve. Because the blood is flowing from the right ventricular flow tract across the pul pulmonic valve into the pulmonary trunk. Your, this is your transducer. Your transducer is denoted by this uh, little box. So the flow is actually moving away from the transducer. So that's why it's below the baseline. Okay? So that's your normal ejection across the uh, pulmonic valve. And you have to measure it. You should also plane it. You should do the, all right, so you can see, and you put your color across the valve to see if there's any pulmonary, pulmonic insufficiency, pulmonary regurgitation, okay? So this is the Doppler signal. So short axis at the level of uh, the papillary muscles this is a nice, okay. So this is, this is our short axis. This is, um, probably a little bit above the papillary muscles. So this would be probably the mid going towards the base, uh, the short axis. Remember when we have the short axis, if we're going to do segments, and you should always split up into segments, you, get, you can describe six segments, right? You have the anterior, uh, anterior segment up here and then the inferior segment. This is the lateral and the septal. But the lateral is divided into anterior lateral and an inferior lateral, right? And then the septal, you have your uh, inferior septal and your anterior septal, right? So six segments at the, the mid-level and the base. Okay, so your inferior, which is below, anterior, above, the lateral, and then you have the septal. But the, the lateral and the septal divide into your anterior septal, anterior lateral wall, inferior lateral wall, inferior septal. All right, so let's just play that. So she's actually probably at the, 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 the base and then She's going to move through, all right, so and so this is your right ventricular outflow track up here, okay. So you got the nice popular muscles, so 
one papillar muscle there, another papillar muscle. So this is your anterior lateral, and this is your posterior medial papillar muscle. Remember the importance of, well, the, the, the papillar muscles give attachment to the cords which attach to the, to the mitral valve and prevent eversion of the valve. So it's, it's important for proper function of the, uh, of the valve. When you have any ischemic injury to the papillary muscles, it's going to affect the valve naturally. So this is the anterior lateral, and this anterior lateral papillary muscle is supplied by the, um, the, mainly the LAD and the circumflex, remember that, from the lecture? So it actually have a dual supply, dual blood supply. The, uh, the LAD and the circ, whereas your posterior medial papillary muscle have a single blood supply. It is supplied by the RCA. So usually when you have an inferior wall heart attack, it is one of the, the conditions that can give rise to ruptured papillary muscle and damp. Because if the RCA is occluded, the right coronary artery is occluded, you know, this muscle can die and rupture because it's only one blood supply it has. Whereas your anterior lateral papillary muscle is supplied by two blood supplies. You have the left anterior descending coronary artery and the circumflex. So if the LAD goes, you still have the circumflex. So it's not going to die, it's not going to become necrotic and rupture. It's, 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 it's very rare for that to occur with your anterior lateral papillary muscle as opposed to the, uh, the posterior medial, which has a single blood supply. So this is probably the, 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 um, one of the most common, uh, well, it, it is, it, to get a ruptured papillary muscle, it's usually usually the posterior medial because of an uh, inferior wall heart attack resulting from uh, occlusion of the right coronary artery, all right? So you can see the nice popular muscles and then you go into the, so this is your mitral valve and this is the short axis of the mitral valve. You have the anterior leaflet on top and then the posterior leaflet below. And this is the view that you can actually, you can plane the opening of the valve. You have to be careful when you're doing that, however. So you see, the valve open. So, see? So you, what you do, you make sure you have full opening of the valve, and then you just plane the interior of the valve, and it will give you the valve area. So that's how that's done in the short axis. Now we move on, we move up to the, uh, to the short axis at the level of the aorta. Okay, so the aorta is right there. In this view, you're gonna look at your, you have to make sure that there are three leaflets, okay? You're gonna look at, um, you know, you look at all the structures, but you know, definitely look at your aorta three leaflets, and it's important that you have the valve open as opposed to closed, because when the valve is closed, the raphe may give you an appearance that there's three cusps or three leaflets, when in actuality, it's only uh, two. Um, so you have to look at the, 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 aor the aortic um, valve when it's open and it, if it's tricuspid then um it will open in 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 a triangle in a triangular uh uh configuration if it's bicuspid it opens in a football configuration all right so this is our tricuspid valve over here and in this view you can see your you can see the septal leaflet and your uh, anterior leaflet. So you have the tricuspid valve. Pulmonic valve is right there. Pul main pulmonary trunk is there. 
splits to the right and the left. Um, so it's a short axis at the level of the aorta. Okay. So this is your, this is the right atrium is right there. The, your interatrial septum is right there, and your left atrium is is right there. So uh, you can you can you can you can sort of do a little manipulation to show more of the pulmonary trunk. So you just have to angle a little bit and probably go down a few intercostal spaces. We showed you this before. The Doppler is across the pulmonary valve, and you get, and so you have the you have the color flow and they actually do the um, pulse wave Doppler. So the pulse wave Doppler is across the the pulmonary valve, and you get a downward signal because the blood is moving away from the um, transducer. And you always put color across as well. Okay, it's a systolic flow because it's you know it's everything is gated to the EKG. Systole is from your QRS to the end of the T wave. Okay, there's a little PI which is measuring pulmonic insufficiency. It's a diastolic flow. Okay, very tiny. It's very difficult to see. So. You, well, you can look look at the look at the, um, your aorta. You can see that there are three leaflets or three cusps. Another important uh, pointer is your interatrial septum abuts the non-coronary cusp. So this is your interatrial septum. This is the non-coronary cusp, and then this is going to be the right, and this will be the left. Okay. So you see three, one, so one, two, three. This is the non-coronary. This is the right, and that's the left. Okay. So she's across the tricuspid valve. Okay. So not much tricuspid regurgitation, as a matter of fact. None. I would say there is no tricuspid regurgitation. It's probably physiologic. TR, but uh, okay. So it's a little, this is just physiologic TR, so you don't have to worry about it. Okay, so the four chamber view. So you should develop a routine. Um, you know, ever, most, everybody starts with a uh, parasternal long access. You can go into your uh, RV inflow view. You can then move into your short axis. If you want to do short axis at the level of the apex, then at the mid, um, you know, do the papillary muscles, then do the, the mitral valve, and then you go towards the base at the level of the aorta. So you develop a routine, okay? So this is the, a four-chamber view, okay? The transducer is still right up there. This is your left ventricle, the left atrium, your mitral valve. This is the uh, anterior leaflet and the posterior leaflet is right over there. Interventricular septum, this is your interatrial septum. You see your RV, and this is your um, RA, right atrium. Okay, the apex, and you must uh, develop, uh, you know, try and name the segments again uh, in, in the, the apical uh, four-chamber view. So this is the lateral wall, so this would be the, the basal, because it's the base, basal lateral wall, it's the mid-lateral wall and the apical lateral wall. And then this is the septum, so the apical septum. This is the uh, mid septum and basal septum. So, you know, develop a strategy of naming 
important, important, you can see in systole, the, the muscle thickens and in diastole it thins, right? So when we talk about um, when we talk about normal uh, function of the 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 the, uh, the heart muscle, it thickens in systole and thins in diastole. Not only is it coming in, it's coming in. You can see that if if I if I put a, a, a marker right here and I put it in play. Let me put it in play and show you. You see, the, the heart moves towards the, this marker. It moves towards the marker. So, the heart does a number of things. I, I probably alluded to this um, in the lecture. The heart has a longitudinal motion where the base moves up towards the apex. It also uh, moves in what we call a circumferential uh, motion, and it thickens, you know, and then it also uh, have a torsion uh, movement, but we're not going to discuss that here today, but you can see the base moves up, and it comes in towards this pointer. Important that the heart muscle thickens in systole. Okay, so a normal muscle thickens in systole, and that's the, that's what you're going to be looking for. So this would be someone with a normal ejection fraction. So if you worry, were able to do your modified Simpson, this ejection fraction would be about 60, 65 percent. All right, so we put color across the mitral valve. Again, develop a routine. We put color across the mitral valve. And what you're looking for is regurgitation. Remember that uh, the color flow Doppler is a form of pulse wave Doppler. And it will give you an indication of there is regurgitation. And then you can further investigate that. So we put our cursor across the mitral valve and we get this is what we call the mitral inflow so the cursor is across the mitral valve and it's the the, the point of interest is just at the tip of the leaflet so the, the point of interest is just at the tip of the leaflet and remember the blood is flowing from the left atrium across the mitral valve into the left ventricle so that's why it's inscribed above the baseline because the flow is moving towards the transducer up here. And we have our E velocity. Remember the E velocity? That's because of the suction. When the, the mitral valve opens, there is this rapid uh, movement of blood from the left atrium into the left ventricle, giving us this E wave, so-called E velocity. Okay? Then after the after that suction, then you have, you can see there's a diastasis here where you have equalization of the pressures. And then after that, then the atrium contracts and you get um, your A wave, okay? So at the end of diastole, okay, the mitral valve close, okay? The mitral valve close, okay? And um, so you're going to go into systole now but before the um before the before the uh the aortic valve opens we have the, that period is called the ivct remember isovolumic contraction time so all the valves are closed in order to get that picture okay you have to that's a, you know you you see your nice E velocity and you get your small A velocity and you don't get your your ejection that you um, you know we've been uh, teaching you guys about that's because you have to position right midway between the mitral leaflets and the uh, and the, the aortic valve so the position for to get that nice picture would be your cursor the point of interest about right here okay but so you get your E velocity. In this case, it looks like, like there's a diastasis. 
then you have your A velocity because of atrial contraction forcing blood into the ventricle. Then you have your IVCT, okay, before you have ejection, okay? Um, everything is gated uh, for the ECG. Okay, and you always have to measure your E velocity. So measure the velocity, okay, E velocity, you have to measure your deceleration time and your A velocity, okay. The deceleration time is from peak E to the baseline, okay. So we are a little, so we are lower than the, the, the uh, tip of the leaflets. So there, you know, this is a so-called normal study, so there's no significant regurgitation. You see little specks, which is physiologic uh, regurgitation. Okay, make sure your EKG is present on all your studies, okay? When you have, when you have a case where you want to properly assess the regurgitation, you have to move the transducer, okay? She, I mean, she identified a small, this, this little envelope is uh, MR, but it's physiologic, so, you know, you wouldn't, I mean, you wouldn't really try to determine the severity of that because it's barely visible, okay? So this signal here is, is mitral regurg, okay? But it's insignificant, okay? It's not a complete envelope, it's not dense, Even from the color flow, it, the color flow was not very uh, prominent as well. So it's your mitral regurg. Okay. So remember, mitral regurg is a systolic flow from the QRS to the T wave, right? In systole, the heart muscle thickens. Okay, the pulmonary, okay, so we're doing the pulmonary vein flow, okay, so in the four chamber view, you have one pulmonary vein here and the next one over there. This is the right lower and then this is the left lower. With the pulmonary vein, remember the pulmonary veins drain into the left atrium, so it's flowing towards the transducer. Pulmonary veins flowing into the left atrium, transducer is there, so you get a systolic component and a diastolic component, okay? In a normal individual, the systolic component is probably a little bit greater than the diastolic component, and then you get what we call an atrial reversal down the bottom. So this is your pulmonary vein flow. Okay, systolic component, diastolic component. You can see the okay, pulmonary vein flow. Okay, so it's pulmonary veins down here. Always try and identify them. So it's important to evaluate your pulmonary vein flow, not only for diastolic function and dysfunction, but also if you if you want to determine the severity of the mitral regurgitation. All right, so you you're gonna evaluate your uh, left ventricular flow track. All right, no, she's doing okay. So this is uh, so this is your tissue Doppler. So 
Tisha, remember, Tisha Doppler is still using the pulse wave Doppler principle. It's still using pulse wave Doppler. So the cursor, okay, your cursor, which is here, you put it at the mitral annulus. You can put it either the medial annulus or the lateral annulus. You're looking, you're looking for the velocity of the tissue. Okay. Okay, you're looking for the velocity of the um the tissue. And we're at the mitral annulus. In systole, the annulus moves up. So that's why the transducer is there. In systole it moves up towards the transducer. So this is our S prime wave. Systole is from QRS to the end of the T wave. This is the S prime, okay? Because the tissue moves up in systole. And then you have two diastolic components. You have the early diastolic component and the late diastolic component. The early diastolic component we call E prime and the late diastolic component we call A prime, okay? So this is S prime, E prime, A prime. Tissue Doppler. It's a pulse wave Doppler. Okay? So the cursor is right there. That's a medial annulus. And we looking for the velocity. It's a velocity. And that velocity is in the order of centimeters uh, per second. Okay? Not meters per second, but centimeters per second. So the, this is the annulus. We do the, the medial and we do the lateral. So she's doing the lateral now. Very important, the lateral annulus will give you larger velocities. Okay, the lateral annulus will give you larger velocity. This is uh, our five chamber view. With the five chamber view, you can see that you open your uh, aorta, you can see the aortic valve, and by doing that, you change the orientation so you can see also the moderator band in the RV. Okay, so if you look careful, you can see the moderator band right over there. Um, so this is the aortic valve, and you put the color flow. You're looking to see if there's aortic insufficiency. Okay, see turbulence as well. Okay, and then you, you, you put your cursor across the left ventricular flow track and you measure the um, left ventricular flow track velocity and the TBI. What I, what I usually instruct uh, a lot of the technici technicians to do is develop a routine of moving the, 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 uh, the, the cursor point of interest from the apex down towards the um, left ventricular flow track. Because if you have obstruction, in intracavitary obstruction in the LV, that one, that's one way of um, showing that. But anyway, this we're basically looking at the left ventricular flow track. And you can see the cursor is right there, a little bit above the aortic valve in the left ventricular flow track, and we get this envelope, okay? So, remember blood flow from the left ventricle across the left ventricular flow track and passes, passes through the aortic valve into the aorta. The transducer is right up there. The blood is moving away from the transducer. That is why below the baseline, okay? Okay, and so you're to get your to get your LVOT TVI, you just plane this. Okay, all right. Let's put it in motion. And of course, it's a systolic flow, so you're gonna plane it, and you just trace it. So you have to learn how to trace these things. You have to have steady hands, and the computer will give you everything else. Okay, so the five chamber view cursor. So to get the aortic valve, you put it into the, you put it directly into the aortic valve now. 
and basically you'll get the flow across the aortic valve. So again, below the baseline, and you just plane it, uh, trace it to get your um, TPR. So you trace it again to get the aortic valve uh, TVI or VTI, and it will give you the peak gradient and the mean gradient. Okay, so the computer will give you the TVI, the mean gradient, and the peak gradient. Okay. There's a little bit of track off regard physiologic, of course. So you, you, you come to the right side now and you put your cursor across the track hospital valve and you're going to assess the track hospital inflow and you're going to evaluate if there is any significant TR and we're going to be doing the right heart uh, on, on Saturday so we're going to do some more detailed stuff I will mention some of them here okay There's no significant TR there. Okay. Or chamber view, color flow. Important, you have to look and see. This is a normal heart with normal ejection fraction, so you have to develop methods of knowing what's normal and that's the only way you can determine what's abnormal. So this is our two chamber view now and in the two chamber view this is the inferior wall okay, and the anterior wall. The anterior wall is right there and this is the inferior wall. So you're going to divide it in segments again so this is your 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 basal inferior wall mid inferior wall and the apical inferior wall and then for the anterior wall you have the basal mid and then the apical anterior wall and of course your 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 uh, mitral valve the anterior and the posterior leaflet and okay so that's your two chamber view you can see your papillary muscle good and a cord okay So, and you're still looking for thickening with contraction. Okay, if you don't see thickening with contraction, then it's either hypokinesis or akinesis. Akinesis, there's no thickening at all. Okay, five chamber view again, the moderator band. So, once you get to five chamber view, you'll see the moderator band. Um, you can see popular month. So this is our tree chamber view. So with the tree chamber view, now you have your aortic valve, and the aorta comes there. Um, so this wall is your um, is your uh, this is your inferior uh, lateral, is your anterior septal. So this is the anterior septal wall, and this is the inferior lateral. Because it's your, your tree chamber view, okay. And you're still looking for thickening with contraction, okay. And this is one of the view where you can evaluate the aortic valve as well. So, say so when you when when the patient has aortic stenosis, you're gonna you're gonna interrogate the valve in multiple views. So this is one of the views that you can use. It's a tree chamber view. Okay. Alright, so we go back to that. 
Okay, she's just going to show you some measurements. Let's see what you're going to do. So this, let's, okay, so she's going to measure the, this is the ascending aorta, okay? Okay, this is your subcostal view, right? This is the liver, okay? It has the consistency of the liver. Um, this is the liver. So the right side of the heart is beside the liver. This is the right ventricle, okay? This is the right atrium, and of course your tricuspid valve. This is your interventricular septum. This is the left ventricle. Left atrium is there, mitral valve is right there. This is the view, if you're gonna measure the thickness of the RV, this is the view you wanna um, use. And we will mention that when we do right side. And you want to zoom it so you can see clearly. Okay? So if the, if the, R, if the RV was thickened, you, you'd see it right there. And you zoom it up and measure it. Also a very good view to look, in at, to look at the uh, interatrial septum. So if there are atrial septal defects, another very good view. And also the ventricular sept, uh, ventricular septal uh, septum, you can look, okay. So the right side, left side, okay. The ventricles are at the bottom, atrium and top, okay. All right. So now we looking at some vessels. So this is our inferior vena cava. The hepatic vein comes off the inferior vena cava. All right, so the inferior vena cava and the hepatic veins go into the, uh, the liver. You're going to measure your IVC just proximal to the inferior to the hepatic vein. The hepatic vein comes comes off right here. You me you do your measurement. Okay, and this is your supersternal notch. Um, so, you know you should be pra practicing um, this view. So this is this is uh, the arch of the aorta. Then you come to the descending aorta. Okay, so if you if uh, this is a little bit clearer, you you could see a little portion of the ascending aorta over here, then the arch, and then the descending aorta. Okay, you need to know the vessels that comes off the 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 um, the, the arch. Okay, um, I'm not seeing another vessel down here, so I'm going to assume that this is the left subclavian. The 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 uh the the left common cartridge should be someplace here, and then the innominate the right uh, innominate should be over here, okay. Right here you're gonna have your right pulmonary artery, and below that you're gonna have your left atrium. It's a very important view because if you're looking for coarctation. Okay, your coarctation usually occurs right there. So if you put your Doppler, you're going to get very high velocity. So if this patient had coarctation of the aorta, and for those people who are not familiar with what coarctation is, it's just a narrowing. So it's a, it's a significant narrowing in the aorta. So the velocity is going to be tremendous. So you're not going to get velocity of one meter per second. You're going to get very high velocity. And you'll see every, you'll, you'll see evidence of turbulence. Okay, so the supersternal notch view. Okay, so I think this is the left subclavian. Okay, this is the arch going descending, and so she look at so she look. Okay, I saw the jump the gun a little bit, but she look at the um. The ascending aorta, where the blood is now was flowing towards uh, the the transducer. That's why it was on top. And then once it come, when the, once the blood gets into the arch and then some move downwards, then it's away from the transducer. That's why it's on the baseline. 
Um, so we can just look at um, let's 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 look at this study. So a, a number of important things that uh, so you you see, you see what a normal study looks like. You have to imprint normal study in your brain. So when you see an abnormal study, you can pick it out. So if we're looking at this study, for example, there's a number of things that, you know, is very obvious. One of the, the obvious thing is that the aortic valve is a bit thickened and it's not opening properly. There's also thickening of the mitral uh, valve and it, uh, it looked like there's calcification. So let, let's, and also, uh, you know, look at the septum. It's, the septum's a bit thick because each of these spacing is about one centimeter. Okay, that's why they're there. Each of these spacing is one centimeter. And this septum is from there to there. It's relatively thick. So, okay. So you look, you look at the aortic valve. It's not opening properly. So this is a patient who have aortic stenosis. The mitral valve, the posterior leaflet looks a little bit restricted. All right, so the, we'll put the Doppler across the aortic valve. Okay, looking to see if there's any AI. Don't see any significant AI. The Doppler across the mitral valve. And remember, you have to you have to interrogate these valves in multiple views because it might not be evident in one view, but you know, you go to another view and you see everything. So again, in systole, there's some thickening, I mean, there's some thickening in the septum. For those of you who have very trained eyes, you can see that we call, it, uh, there's an inch point there's an inch point somewhere along here. And that inch point is, uh, is an area with normal motion and an area with abnormal motion. Um, I think the, the, the mid, going to the mid septum, it's not thickening properly because of a possible prior heart attack. The base is thickening okay. So, if you look clearly, you see like there's an inch point there. But well, that's me. So, you know, if you do M mode, you do M mode across the aortic valve. So the cursor is across the aortic valve. It's going across the left atrium as well. As I said, we have a separate lecture for, for M mode, so don't worry too much about, you know, not understanding what's going on. But you know, it should be a part of um, a routine exam. So you do it across the aortic valve, then you move your cursor across the mitral valve, and you do your M mode across the mitral valve, and then you move it towards the left ventricular cavity, and you do your M mode there. So those are the three positions. I say we have a separate lecture for that, and we'll go over, you know, these things in detail. Um, so this patient has aortic stenosis, so we're going to have to evaluate the aortic valve thoroughly. All right. So look at the valve. You see it's not open. Okay, you have seen a lot of normals, and you, you know that that's not opening to the full extent. So we'll describe that valve as thickened with some calcification, but the valve is mainly thickened. Remember that the normal study we looked at earlier, when it close in the middle, you could you just get a very thin line. You can see this is a very bright line. All right, so we're going to get some measurements because we have to give a, a valve area. We have to determine the valve area. All right, so we, we measure the RV cavity. They will measure the, the, the uh, right ventricular flow track. Okay. We're going to measure the septum after that. So this, this is in diastole, the aortic valve is closed, the mitral valve is open. So you measure the septum, the thickness of the septum, okay, at the, the, the tip of the mitral leaflet, you measure LV cavity size in diastole, LV cavity size in diastole, and then you measure the posterior wall.
Okay, we're going to measure the posterior wall, and you measure the posterior wall thickness. Okay, because you 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 need to know is this left ventricular hypertrophy or not? Because left ventricular hypertrophy does carry you know a prognosis with it. It's not a benign condition. You know there uh, you have increased arrhythmia and things like that. So. All right, so we go to systole now, and we're going to do some measurements in systole. Okay, so in systole, so systole is at the T wave. The aortic valve is open, the mitral valve is closed, and we're going to measure the aortic root. So we'll measure the aortic root, usually from sinus to sinus. From this one sinus of valsalva to the next sinus of valsalva, you have to know what's normal, what's abnormal. The upper limit is 3.7 centimeters. You measure the LVOT, well, you measure left atrium. So she measures the left atrium. Okay, you have to know what's the upper limit. The upper limit is 4 centimeters. And you're going to measure, remember this little guy is your descending aorta right there. You measure the LV cavity size in systole, okay? So you have to measure it in diastole, measure it in systole, LV cavity size in systole. This is our RV inflow view. Okay, this is uh, RV is there, right atrium is down there. Okay. So develop a routine that encompass all your measurements so that you don't have to go back and say, well, I didn't remember to do this. Develop a routine that encompass all the measurements. Okay. So this is a, a, a suboptimal study, but you have to know what to expect, and you have to try and get the best pictures as possible. Um, It's across the pulmonic valve, and she's measuring the peak velocity. You must always trace your envelope to get your um, VTI. Short axis at the level of the mitral valve. Okay. Level of the mitral valve, the anterior leaflet, posterior leaflet. Okay. See, everything thickens with systole, it thins with diastole. Okay. The short axis. We have to learn to name the segments. Don't memorize it. Just no anterior, inferior, lateral, and you divide it up. Yeah. Okay, so let's say mitral valve open, close. You can plane it in the short axis view. Patient have uh, mitral stenosis, you can do that. Okay, you can see the popular muscles. Okay. And that is why it's important for you to look at normal studies to know what a normal study looks like. So when you see an abnormal study, in, you right away you know it's abnormal. So short axis, at, short axis, you're going to go to the, um, the aortic. Okay, so at the level of the aortic. You can see there's three cusps. You can see the valve, it's not open until its full extent. You can see that it's thickened. You can see thicken, somewhat restricted. Your pulmonic valve is over there. So pulmonic valve opening and closing. 
tricuspid valve is expected somewhere inside there. This is a interatrial septum somewhere there. Okay. But the important thing is that the valve is thickened and somewhat restricted. Tricuspid valve is right there. Okay, the color flow is across the pulmonic valve. You see this color going up there, that's a PI right up there, pulmonic insufficiency. More across the aortic valve. Okay. So you know that there's a little PI. So you, when you go with your Doppler, you can uh, fully assess. When you go to the, the pulse wave Doppler, you can fully assess uh, the pulmonic insufficiency. So you put your pulse wave Doppler there. This is the ejection across the pulmonic valve, systole. And you know that there is a PI, so you just have to look for it. Okay. You just have to look for the PI. Okay, so the PR right there, so you can just put the cursor right over that. Okay, nice. you can hear it too. Okay, so this is the PI right there. You can hear it. Okay. But relatively small. So this is your systolic ejection across the pulmonic valve. And your PIs are pulled right there. So these are PI. This is the PI. Remember the PI is going to have an early velocity or a late velocity. Okay. Still across the uh, pulmonic valve. Now across the tricuspid valve. Okay, remember flow towards the transducer is red, away from the transducer is blue. Okay. So remember the we're across the tricuspid valve, and the blood, of course, is going to do the same thing. It's going to move from the atrium across the tricuspid valve into the right ventricular flow tract. It's moving towards the transducer, so it's going to be above the baseline, okay? And, um, you know, the same thing happens on the right side. You have your E velocity, your A velocity, and we're going to discuss these in much more detail in our next uh, few lectures. Uh, the important difference between your E and your A velocity on the right side is that there, the velocities are less, and you have more what we call respiratory variation. So on the left side, it doesn't vary too much with respiration, but on the right side, it varies a lot with respiration. So that's an important uh, difference between the tricuspid inflow and the mitral inflow. So there is a small amount of TR, you know, I know that because there's a, this is a systolic Doppler which is coming in, you know, it's below the baseline so it will be consistent with tricuspid regurg. Okay? All right. So she didn't. All right, so, all right, so this is our apical four-chamber view, and I want you to look right up here, okay? You can see it's not thickening. You can see that it's not thickening. And, you know, once you, remember when I 
when in the power stern along axis, I, I spoke about the inch point. This is, it is the, the, the junction between this area which is not moving well and this area which is moving. And that's what give you the inch point. So, you know, once you look at a, a lot of these studies, I mean, these things jump out at you and you know that you're going to see something later on. So if you look up here, it's not thickening. And you can't, as I say, you can't look for motion because it might have good motion, but it's not thickening. And thickening is, um, you know, the most important thing. Okay. There's not much thickening in the apical uh, septum. And we have modalities that can help us to look at that area. We have what we call contrast. So we can inject contrast into the ventricle, which, can, which allows us to better visualize the area and show that where you, you can see that this the apex is not really moving. It's, it's not moving. You can see that. The apex is not moving. So this is a patient who had a heart attack that took out the apex of the heart. Okay. It's not thickening. It's not moving. Um, After this study, we're going to wrap it up. We don't want to spend too much time. Um, but we look at normal and we see an abnormal. The, the, the next few um, weeks, we're going to look at valves mainly. See, this is not moving. So this is a heart attack that took out the apex of the heart. It's not thickening and it's not moving. This is an individual that will, that's, you know, will form clots. They form blood clots in the apex of the heart because it's not moving. The blood will stagnate and clot. So, you know, you have to look carefully in, in, in this area to make sure there's no blood clot there. So the other areas are moving. Okay. Thicken, thicken with contract. This area is, let's see. It's not moving. Okay. This is a, a ventricle that will, will form clots because it's not uh, moving. Okay. It's not thickening. Okay. And there is uh, Let's see. So a little bit of uh, so the the, the color flow dot is across a mitral valve, and you can see so you have your mitral so you have your mitral inflow, okay? You have your E velocity and your A velocity. So your E velocity is smaller than the A velocity. So you know this, this is not a normal. Uh, patient. So is either is this as a result of aging? Remember, the older you get, you lose your E. So this could be as a result of aging or it could be diastolic dysfunction. But we would know you have to look at your E prime. So let's look. All right. So the E is smaller than the A and you have to measure it. So you're going to measure your E velocity you're going to measure your A velocity and the deceleration time. Mitral inflow, E velocity, A velocity, and so you 
have to do your measurements. You measure the velocity. Okay. Velocity. Measure the velocity. And you have to measure the deceleration time. Okay. Remember the relationship between deceleration time and pressure half time. Okay. Where deceleration time, your pressure, your deceleration time is 0.29 times. Your pressure half time is 0.29 times. 0.29 times the deceleration time. Remember that. So it's roughly like a third. So we know the E is smaller than the A. We just have to look at the Fischer Doppler. Okay. There's no significant uh, MR. So you develop a routine. Don't don't stray from your routine. If you do, you're gonna miss a lot of things. So we measure it. We're looking at the the uh, pulmonary flow, pulmonary venous flow. Okay. So let's see what we got. So with the pulmonary venous flow, it's not it's not very clear. And in some some patients, it's difficult to get the pulmonary venous flow. You should always try and get it, though. Okay? You're not going to get it in all your patients. Okay, so your right lower pulmonary vein is right there. The left is over there. Okay? So I think she's going to get a tissue doppler now. So the, the, the medial mitral annulus and it's remember tissue doppler is a pulse doppler okay so that's a tissue doppler and um, it's, it's not okay let's pause this okay all right so this is uh, this is our e prime uh, this this machine is an older machine, so it doesn't have a dedicated um, TDI button. But once you have a pulse wave on your machine, you can adjust the pulse wave to give you TDI. Um, okay, because it's a pulse wave Doppler, so you just have to make the necessary adjustment. So remember, we said this is your systolic component early. Uh, diastolic component, late diastolic component. So this is your E prime, A prime, and you just have to measure it. Okay, so it's uh, you got an E prime of six centimeters per second. So that will be low. So if the E prime is six centimeters per second. Remember, the E was smaller than the A, so that could only be type 1, right? Type 1 diastolic dysfunction.
They said there's a little bit of mitra regurge. You can see the color coming back there a little bit. All right, so she's going to look at the tissue doctor again. Okay. No, uh, she's looking at the, the... Okay, so as I, as I pointed out, I tell most of the technicians that pass through me to evaluate the left ventricular cavity feeds. Some patients will have obstruction in the, the left ventricular cavity because of uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, among other things. You can have, you know, abnormal membranes and stuff. So you should always run your cursor from the apex straight down to the left ventricular flow tract. You want to look at the velocity. You want to look at gradients. Um, so that's what she's doing. Okay, so you come straight down. You come down. So you 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 want to get towards the right, the right, the left ventricle flow track right there. So remember, this patient has a little aortic stenosis, so you don't want to get too close to the valve because if you're too close to the valve, you're going to get some turbulence and it's going to falsely increase your left ventricle flow track velocity, okay? And then when, if you're going to use it in your equation to calculate valve area, it's going to falsely increase the valve area. So you, you, you just play in the LVOT um, signal, and it will give you the VTI. So that's the left ventricle flow track. That's one of the, that's one of the, the, the parameters that you need to, to, to put in your equation to calculate valve area. You also have to put your cursor into the valve itself. All right, so we'll put it directly into the valve and you want to measure you want to measure the velocity and the gradient. So there wasn't much of a gradient, but remember, multiple views, multiple views. So because if it's, if the flow is not parallel to the, if the transducer is not parallel to flow, you're not going to get your maximum velocity, hence you're not going to get your maximum gradient. So you have to interrogate the aortic valve from multiple multiple uh, windows, okay? So, so in this window, you get a mean gradient of five and a peak gradient of eight, you know? Okay, the apex not moving. So this is a, this is a, a, a you saw a con, it, it's a RV, it's a RV concentrated view. So you manipulate the probe to show more of the RV. So that's, And when you're doing, when you're evaluating the right side, you're going to have to do a lot of these modified views to look, have a better look at the right side.
Um, so we're going to wrap this up in a few minutes. So show you what a normal study look like. Uh, and then we show you a study where the apex was akinetic because of a heart attack. Um, so your color flow is across the tricuspid valve. So there's not much of a valvular, um, valvular regurgitation there. So you must always evaluate the right side. I think, uh, let's see if there's anything else interesting in this. Any question? All right, so this, we're going to, you must heard we talk about TAPSI, and we, we're going to do it in more detail when we do the right side of the heart. So this is what she's doing, and she's doing TAPSI. It's one method of assessing the right ventricular systolic function. And there are multiple methods to evaluate the, the right ventricular systolic function. TAPC is just one. And it, it's an acronym which stands for Tricuspid Annular Plane Systolic Excursion. That's T-A-P-S-E, TAPC, Tricuspid Annular Plane Systolic Excursion. So you put your cursor, the lateral tricuspid annulus, and you're basically looking to see how much it moves up. So it's actually a displacement. You're, you're measuring, it's not a velocity, it's a displacement, and you use the M mode. So what happens when the, 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 the tricuspid annular moves up? It uh, goes up, and then it goes up in systole, and in diastole, it goes down. So this is the excursion you want to measure. You want to measure how much it goes up. So it's actually a vertical displacement. So you measure from there to there. We're going to do all of that in, 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 in the next uh, few lectures. But this is TAPSI. It's uh, one of the means of evaluating right ventricular systolic function. And... Um, how much the tricuspid and the plane moves up in systole, and it should be more than 15 millimeters. Normal excursion should be more than 15 millimeters. We're also going to look at velocity, but the velocity is also important. Um, so, you know, right-sided evaluation, very, very interesting. All right, so um, I think we'll basically exhaust this study. All right, any question? Any questions? Everybody fall asleep? Any question? Uh, yeah. Well, no. No, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Hello? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, the question is, uh, on the upgraded sheet, where we have to change the measurement from the leaflet insertion to measure the LVOT. How far from the insertion should we measure from? All right. So it should a, a, a few millimeters, you know, Probably you want to make sure you can see the um, the outflow track clearly. So you know most most texts will say about five millimeters from the um, the leaflets, and it's you want to you want to use the tissue blood plane. You want to stay right there. So tissue blood plane. So just a little in front of the leaflet. The important thing though is that. You should always 
make a note where you're measuring in that particular patient. So when you go back the next time, you measure the same place. You should, okay, got you. It has yeah. to be a consistent because if the patient comes to you today and you do an evaluation and you get a certain area, you know, if, if they come back and next time and use a different area, a different place, and it's larger, remember you're going to square that. So, you know, you want to yeah. make sure you, um, you measure from the same place each time. Any, any, any other questions? Okay. Anybody? I, I see where this session is being recorded. Does that mean it's going to be on the website? I mean, you, you can get a copy. It's, it's, no, we, I mean, we'll give you a copy. It's not going to... Uh, we haven't determined how we're going to post these um, recorded sessions. So, you know, but if you want a copy, we can give you a copy. Okay. You know, I just want to go over it again. Right. You know, just to reinforce right. the, the thing. Say, well, the, the, the thing about a reading session, though, is that a lot of these things... We're gonna go over, you know, in, in 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 you know multiple times. We're gonna go over these things multiple times because if we, you should always look at the study in its entirety. So, not because the patient has significant mitral regurgitation, you just cone into that because you'll miss, you know, other important things. So. We're gonna look at all the studies in detail. So we're gonna go over these things again. So um, any any other question? So what I'm gonna try and do is um find cases to to highlight uh, the areas that we have, uh, the topics that we have covered. So, you know, the valve and the pathology, we're going to find cases that will um, cover those. We did, we did systolic function, so, you know, you saw a patient with normal ejection fraction and then one with wall motion abnormality, um, you know, to go over the study thoroughly takes time, and that's, you know, Noel can tell you, when we used to start look at study at 10 o'clock, 12 o'clock, we're leaving out of uh, the hospital. Um, all right, so this is your IVC, inferior vena cava, it's your hepatic vein, okay? The hepatic vein smaller, and it goes into the liver, okay? So, and you measure the IVC proximal to the hepatic vein. So all these things are very important when you evaluate in the right side of the heart. So right side of the heart has become very, very interesting. Very interesting. So the next few weeks is gonna be very interesting. <laughs> Any other question? So no questions. So we, we we I think we can um sign off. Is, is was this time 